Hello and welcome back to Global Value. In today's video, we are going to be performing a fundamental stock analysis of General Dynamics Corporation, ticker symbol GD. We're looking at General Dynamics today because they are a newly crowned dividend aristocrat, meaning that they have increased their dividends each year for the past 25 years. For a bit of history about this company, Warren Buffett actually invested into General Dynamics in the early 1990s after seeing it be significantly mispriced by the market. He originally did it as a deep value kind of investment. As he continued to learn more about the business, he actually really liked the business's management, their overall capital allocation strategy, and the business overall. However, within a few years of making the investment, General Dynamics stock really shot up. Warren Buffett felt that he had other opportunities available to him. So he sold out of General Dynamics and put that money somewhere else. And since then, he has not reinvested back into the business. So with that bit of history that Warren Buffett once felt comfortable investing in this business and the fact that they are a dividend aristocrat, let's get into our analysis. So starting off, General Dynamics is currently trading at just over $226 per share. Year to date, their stock price is up 8.5% in stark contrast to the overall market. Over the past year, their stock price is up 15.5%. Going back five years, they're only up about 3% compounded annually. Over 10 years, however, they're up 13.5% compounded annually. And going back prior to the global financial crisis, General Dynamics is up about 9% compounded annually. Keep in mind that these returns are not including their dividends. So General Dynamics is trading in between their 52-week high and low, although they're closer to their high. General Dynamics is a large military defense contractor. They have about a $62 billion market cap. So for more background about the business, General Dynamics is a defense contractor and business jet manufacturer. The firm's segments include aerospace, combat systems, marine, and technologies. The company's aerospace segment creates Gulfstream business jets. Combat system produces land-based combat vehicles such as the M1 Abrams tank. The marine subsegment creates nuclear powered submarines, among other things. The technology segment contains two main units an IT business that primarily serves the government market, and a mission systems business that focuses on products that provide command, control, computers, intelligence, surveillance, and reconnaissance capabilities to the military. This segment also offers cloud computing, AI, machine learning, big data analytics, development, security, and operations and Defense Enterprise Office System Solutions. General Dynamics Corporation was founded in 1899 and is headquartered in Reston, Virginia. So for today's fundamental analysis, we're gonna be performing a modified version of the eight pillar analysis popularized by Everything Money, taking a look at eight key financial metrics of the business to come to a holistic and beginning understanding of General Dynamics based on their fundamentals. So let's get right into our analysis. Starting off with pillar number one, we want their average PE over the past five years to be below 22 and a half. So currently they're trading at 19 times earnings. Over this time frame, they've gone down to a low of nine times earnings when the stock market crashed because of COVID in March of 2020. And they've traded at a high of just 24 times earnings. So averaged out, they're trading at about 17 times earnings. So this is going to be a check to start off here on pillar number one. Pillar number two, we want an average five-year return on capital that's greater than 9%. Over the long run, over the course of decades, a stock is going to return approximately what its underlying business returns, and here these business returns are captured by return on capital. So while their return on capital has come down over the past five years, they're still producing above average returns on capital. Their returns have been pretty steady over the past two years, and overall averaged out over this time frame they're earning just under an 18% return on capital. So that's double that metric we're looking for. And this is gonna be another check, two for two to start off here on pillar number two. Pillar number three, we're looking for five-year revenue growth. General Dynamics has grown revenues from just under $31 billion in 2017 to about $38.5 billion in 2021. Another check here on pillar number three. Pillar number four, we're looking for five-year net income growth. General Dynamics has grown net incomes. They've been pretty steady, however, over this time frame. In 2017, they had $2.9 billion of net income, and this increased to just about $3.3 billion of net income in 2021. Not huge growth here, very single digits, but slow and steady. However, it is growth nonetheless. So that's another check here on pillar number four. 
Pillar number five, we're looking for decreasing shares outstanding. When you purchase a share of stock, what you're really buying is a fractional ownership percentage in that underlying business. When a business buys back stock and decreases the number of shares that they have outstanding, they're increasing your ownership percentage of the business, ultimately increasing the percentage of the business's profits that you're going to be entitled to without you having to spend a dime. So we're looking for companies that are buying back shares when the business is trading at reasonable valuations. Here we're seeing just that. General Dynamics has decreased their shares outstanding from about $305 million in 2017 down to $282 million in 2021. So over this time frame, they bought back about 7% of their shares outstanding. So if you had been a shareholder over the past five years, you now own 7% more of the business than you did five years ago. This is a welcome sign to see here, especially when we see that the business has been trading at reasonable valuation multiples. So it's another check on pillar number five. So far through five pillars, we've got five checks. Let's keep it going. Pillar number six, we're looking for five-year free cash flow growth. Free cash flow is cash from operations minus capital expenditures. It's this column here in green. Free cash flow is the lifeblood of any business and a business's abilities to produce free cash flows now and until judgment day discounted back by some reasonable interest rate is ultimately what that business is going to be worth. So free cash flow can be used to pay dividends, buy back shares, pay down debt, make acquisitions, or reinvest back into the business. Here, unfortunately, we're seeing a slight dip in free cash flows. They produced about $3.4 billion of free cash flow in 2017, and they produced about $3.3 billion of free cash flow in 2021. So down only about $40 million here. However, in these intervening years, their free cash flows have also been below these two numbers. Over five years, their free cash flows are flat. However, they have bounced around somewhat and they've been overall down from 2017. So in an average year, General Dynamics is producing just under $2.75 billion of free cash flow a year. So we'll use that number when we evaluate how the business utilizes leverage. And then when we look at how their overall market cap compares to their ability to produce free cash flows. So again here, unfortunately, this is our first X. Pillar number seven, we want their net debt, which is long and short-term liabilities minus cash and short-term cash equivalents to be below their average five-year free cash flow multiplied by five. So as of the end of last year, General Dynamics had $11.6 billion of net debt. When we multiply their average five-year free cash flow, of $2.75 billion times five, that brings us to just under $13.8 billion. This is gonna be a check here. General Dynamics is using a reasonable amount of leverage in their business. It's more than modest. However, if they keep having average years of free cash flow over the next five years, they'll have more than enough money to pay off all this debt. So, so far through seven pillars, we're six for seven. Finally, the big pillar of them all, pillar number eight, we want their market cap to be below their average five-year free cash flow multiplied by 20 to give us a starting point as to a reasonable valuation for the business. So currently, General Dynamics has about a $62 billion market cap. When we multiply their average five-year free cash flow of $2.75 billion times 20, that only brings us to $55 billion. So we're off here by about $7 billion. So this is gonna be our second X here on pillar number eight. Last but not least, General Dynamics is a newly crowned dividend aristocrat. Again, meaning that they've increased their dividend payouts for each of the past 25 years. Here we're looking at their dividend profile to make sure that their dividend is healthy and supported by their free cash flows so that we can determine whether or not it's sustainable now and into the future. So over the last five years, they've increased their dividends per share in each of the five years. And while their cash flows per share have actually slightly increased, while their overall cash flows have pretty much been flat, in each of these five years, they've had more than enough money to continue paying out this dividend. The closest they cut it was in 2019 when they had over a 60% dividend payout ratio. But in each of the other four years, they've had more than enough cash flows to continue paying out this dividend. So while this is not a guarantee of any sort for the future, it looks like their dividend is in pretty good shape overall and I'd expect this to continue growing now and into the future. So in summary, General Dynamics checks the box on six out of eight pillars. They're off when it comes to cash flows as their cash flows have pretty much been flat over the last five years. And currently they're trading at a market cap that's above our starting point for what we would value them based on their abilities to produce free cash flows. 
However, they check the box on all the other pillars. And just because their cash flows are off doesn't mean that you're automatically going to throw this business out. This type of analysis is a holistic beginning understanding of the business and no single metric should be taken in isolation. You want to look at the business holistically as if you owned 100% of it. At the same time, it's not a financial recommendation. It's not financial advice. What this analysis does is serve as a starting point to determine whether you think it's worthwhile to learn more about the business and dive in deeper here. Again, General Dynamics is both a defense contractor and a dividend aristocrat. So in any sort of period of economic uncertainty, it's likely that this business is going to continue doing at least okay overall. So with that said, that's it for today's fundamental stock analysis of General Dynamics Corporation, ticker symbol GD. If you enjoyed today's video, please be sure to like the video, subscribe to the channel for more stock analysis videos, and comment down below what business you want me to take a look at next time. Thanks for learning about General Dynamics with me, and have a great day.